In this video, I'm going to unbox and review the Shishion V88, which is basically an Android TV box with a quad-core processor in it. Now, I bought this from Gearbest for about £20, so this is very cheap. And this promises basically that you can plug this into your TV, and because it's got Android on it, you can play games, play movies on Netflix, and you can even use this thing called Kodi, which will hopefully allow you to play movies over your network. So this promises quite a lot, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not it delivers at that £20 price point. Now I'm getting very close to 5,000 subscribers, at which point I'm going to give away two Apple Watch clones, um, and I'm still going to do that, but I'm also announcing in this video that at 20,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away one iPad Mini to one of you randomly. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my videos, get your friends to subscribe as well, and let's try and get up to 20,000 subscribers. You can see that this is a 4K TV box, which means that it outputs ultra high definition video and pictures. Um, I'm not sure whether that's true. I'm not going to be able to test it because I don't actually have a 4K TV. I'm assuming that because they're saying that it is, that it actually is. But I know that in the past, with ones that were full HD, um, yes, they could output full HD video, but they were upscaling that video from 720p. So I don't know whether or not this is true or not. And if you've got one of these, I'd be really interested to know. Please leave me a comment down below. The second thing it says on here is 3D. And I have got no idea why it says that because I doubt very much that this is able to output a 3D signal. It also says Kodi, as I mentioned in the introduction, which is great because if it's pre-installed on here, it means it will be able to directly stream movies and things over my network. And it's Android, which means it should be really familiar and easy to use. Right, let's open the box and see what you actually get inside. Okay, so inside we've got the TV box itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a minute. And then underneath this sort of cardboard bit here, we've got an HDMI cable, a very short HDMI cable. And I've got two things to say about this. Firstly, it is too short. And secondly, I couldn't get this box to work using this cable. I don't think this works properly. And this isn't the first time I've bought a device from Gearbest where the cable has let the device down. But thankfully, you can get HDMI cables incredibly cheaply for as little as 99p. I've bought those cheap ones and they've never gone wrong. We've got um, a power adapter. I've got a UK one, obviously, uh, but you can get US and EU ones. It's just an option on the Gearbest website. And finally, We've got this nice um, remote control in here, which is laid out very nicely and is going to make it a lot easier to use this TV box. We've also got a very small manual in here, which I'm hoping I won't have to refer to too much. Uh, tells you what's in the box, how to configure it with your television, and then gives you a sort of broad overview of the Android software and how to use it. And there's also some things about upgrading it and stuff, so I suppose that is quite useful. Right, let's do the really satisfying bit of taking the plastic off this. So the first thing to say about this box is it's incredibly light. Um, if you were to buy something more expensive than this, you know, from like an Amazon Fire TV or something, you'd expect it to have a little bit of weight, makes you feel a bit more confident that it's got a lot going on inside. But for £20, I'm not going to complain. In actual fact, it's quite similar to the Amazon Fire TV design. And then we've got various ports on the side here. We've got an SD or MMC card slot here. They're basically the same thing. We've got not one, not two, but three. Oh no, four USB ports on the side of this, which is great because that means you'll be able to plug removable hard drives, pen drives, um, keyboard and mice into this, um, which is which is really good. And that's to be honest, that's missing on a lot of the higher end uh, TV boxes. We've also got they look like a digital out. Uh, ports basically so if you've got a 5.1 speaker system you should be able to plug uh, that assuming you've got the right uh, sort of plug into this um, we've got an HDMI port which is what I'm going to be using and we've got an Ethernet port this has also got wireless on board but it's great that it's got Ethernet because it's always better to be honest to be plug your um, device in wired you'll get faster speeds and it's got the 5 volt port there as well. Okay, I think it's time to plug this into my TV. It's time to plug the um, HDMI cable in, so I'm going to unplug it from my um, Fire TV. Just plug it in the side there like that. 
and also plug in the 5 volt power adapter. So I've turned the V88 TV box on and we're welcomed by this sort of dashboard screen here. Now I've already gone into the settings and connected it to my Wi-Fi, no problem at all. Um, and I can use this remote control to, um, it is infrared so you do have to point it at the box. I can use it to uh, navigate this um, dashboard screen. And you can see that there are six main options on here and we'll go through each of them. The first one is online video. And if I click this, it basically gives us the option to open Kodi, which is a sort of software that's designed for streaming music and video off the internet or off a network drive. So the, I'm going to connect this to my um, to my file server on my network. I have actually connected my USB keyboard to this because when I had to enter the um, passcode for my wireless network, it was a little bit difficult doing it on this remote control. But using a keyboard, it's a lot easier. And I just plugged it in and it worked straight away. I'm playing a video here, which is from a Centre Parks vlog. And I can confirm that it is outputting at 1080p. So this, you can see a lot of detail in this image close up. You can see that the image is stuttering a lot. Now, I even found this, to be honest, on my um, Amazon Fire TV as well. And I had to do some sort of setting changes to change the buffer on the um, Amazon Fire TV to get it to play video over my network smoothly. But it's good anyway that we can uh, play video on here. I will just put an SD card in here with a high definition video on to make sure that Kodi can play that properly. And of course, if you were connected by wire, by ethernet cable to your network, then you probably wouldn't have this problem either. So you can see that when I play this over an SD card, it's actually as, as smooth as it should be. So this is the um, stuttering on the previous one was purely a network issue, which could be resolved with the setting in Kodi rather than anything to do with the processor or anything on this TV box. Right, let's have a look at Netflix. So I've signed into Netflix and I'm playing one of the episodes of Black Mirror, which is a new series, a Netflix original out, um, which is one of my favourites at the moment. And um, I logged in just fine. I played video and um, I'm not going to show you it for copyright reasons. After a sort of about 10 seconds of sort of buffering, it plays very smoothly indeed. Now, is it HD? Well, I think it's 720p, which is not full HD, and this isn't uncommon. Well, basically, Netflix is a bit funny about who they let stream um, full HD video. It tends to be the more expensive versions of products like the, um, like the Nexus tablets and the Android products that actually get full access, and televisions that get full access to full HD, whereas things like this are sort of limited to 720, but it's definitely watchable. So if you do have an external drive or an SD card or a USB pen plugged into this, by accessing this local item on the um, dashboard menu, you can have a look at the contents of those devices. So that's pretty cool. So there are loads of settings you can change and look at on this device, including in the about device thing, um, some things about updating it, uh, which is good and also the Android version, which is 5.1, which is pretty good, to be honest. Um, a lot of these sort of cheap Android devices have only have am, um, Android 4 point something. So that's a pretty good feature of this for only £20. You can also play music on here. So if you've got music on any of your um, external devices or over a network or something, you can use this as a sort of music player. And then under My Apps, on here we have all the sort of Android apps that are pre-installed on here, including things like Netflix, there's a sort of game thing over here, Skype, YouTube, basically anything you can do on an Android device you can do on this uh, TV box, which makes it really powerful. You know, things like email, things like the internet. In fact, let's go quickly um, on the internet. So on the web browser that comes with this TV box, I've gone to the BBC News website and I use my USB keyboard to do that. And because this has got um, a quad-core processor in it, you can see that everything is smooth to uh, view. So really, I mean, this could 
feasibly replace a tablet or a PC or a laptop um, if you just want to browse the internet and sort of look things up it's very easy to do it even actually works with the um, USB mouse that works with this keyboard so it's basically a fully functional internet browser or or computer if you like and you got all the sort of standard Android things like if I press this square thing at the bottom here you get this interface where you can scroll between the apps that are currently open and this one takes you back to the home screen and this is the back screen so I mean really I'm very impressed with this this could feasibly replace my Amazon Fire TV if it ever broke because it's got the added advantage that um, it's got digital out on it which uh, the Amazon Fire TV the new version doesn't have anymore it's very simple and uh, I think it's good that it's simple actually because really you just want to um, be able to quickly play videos or music or go to an app you don't really want the added sort of complications that you get on other Android devices on something that you're meant to use on your TV so in conclusion is this worth buying well I think for 20 pounds if that's your budget this is perfect a TV box for 20 pounds with Android on it where you can play Netflix use Kodi and play games it's not the fastest machine in the world, but for £20, what do you expect? And if this 4K claim is true, which I am a little bit doubtful about, then it's definitely worth the money. The, the remote control is easy to use. I mean, I have got an Amazon Fire TV, but to be honest, this isn't much different to it. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Remember, at 20,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away an iPad mini to one of you. Um, and I'll see you next time for another unboxing and review.